Mike O'Shea. I didn't see Dietrich Nichols out there today. Is he okay? Did I just miss him? No, he's sick. Sick. Like the con- like I- most, lots of other humans around this time of year? <laughs> yeah. He's under the weather. Yeah, under the weather, sure. I That's shook hands it. with him yesterday, so that kind of can serve you. Um, Nick Dembski, is he 100%? Yeah, he'll be, he's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, can I get your take on Kevin Clarcius' rookie season? Yeah, I like what he's done. Um, continue to learn, which is, I think, most important. Right? Came in humble, wanting to learn, ready to go, takes instruction well. Um, quiet, likable kid. Uh, and then the physical attributes, you know, catches the ball, goes hard into contact, strong hands, can block, willing to do all of it. Uh, has done some work for us on special teams too, so yeah, excited. He's a he's he's a good kid. I fear this may be a dumb question, but you have guys on the team who are from Montreal who've never played a pro game there. Does that factor in any way into who makes the roster for Saturday? No. Third. Wanted to ask you. I feel like not really brought up his name much this season, but he's quietly having close to a thousand yard season, Nick Dembski. Just yeah, he's always capable of that. He's always capable, yeah, of course. Always capable of that, yeah. Sounds like he's capable of a lot more than just that. Uh, you know, no one will get into specifics on what exactly you ask Nick Dembski to do on a weekly basis, but you know, Zach describes it five times more than any other player that he knows. It's just what is it about him being able to take a heavy workload, whether that be, you know, schemes or whatever it is. What is it about his football IQ? That yeah, I think it starts with football IQ. Yeah. It starts with the ability to take in all the information and process it, hear the call, know exactly where he's supposed to be from multiple positions. Um, and, and you really do, you ask him to do everything. So, and he's that kind of athlete that he can, and he's built like his, you know, his body type is such that he can do a whole bunch of different things very well. That's the thing we hear a lot about him is he's an underrated athlete. Like he doesn't have the six pack that Johnny Augustine has, or he doesn't, you know, he's doesn't, he's not bulging out of his, you know, t-shirts with his muscles or whatever. But everyone talks about. I'm him. sure he's disappointed that you're saying that. Well, I'm, I'm just not saying he's out of shape. I know. Oh, well, but nobody not, else would know not, that I'm until not, now you've blurted it out to the world. Well, I mean, I'm sure <laughs> that's a large reach here. But I just, but but everyone talks about how he's just a gifted athlete. Like he's, you know, and he, and he's he always gifted. has been. That's what I mean. From the though, time he played at high school and university. Which was almost Almost 10 years ago. He's That's kind of my point. Athlete. He's still maintaining that physical, yeah. you know, edge. What do you see from Yeah, him? I think he probably before people realized he was just head and shoulders above most other people on the field, wherever level he was at. And even early on in his career, he would have been a top athlete on the field in the CFL. So to say he's maintained it, I think he's just, he's been there. And he was at such a high level that um, if someone believes there's drop off, it's just that he's still better than everybody, but he maybe wasn't like he was five years ago. None of us are, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, totally. But he's still, when he steps on the field, he's as athletic as anyone out there. You have these moments, I think he even said about Clercius earlier this week, that you watch him and you're like, that's how you play football the right way. I'm wondering what it is about Nick's game where you, you can look at his game and be like, that's how you play football the right way. Yeah, I think he, he just sees the game. Um, I bet you if you watched him go play hockey, he would see the ice exceptionally well. If you're playing basketball with him, he would see the court and feel the court exceptionally well. He does the same thing on the football field. I think he has got a sense about him and how things are all, how things are going to fit and where it's going to work and how to manipulate coverage and those some of those things you learn. But I think there's a natural ability there that if you could throw him into any sport and he's going to go, oh, he's going to figure it out very quickly. Whether it's Nick or somebody else, you've obviously been in this game for a long time. Do you? Is there a certain? I know that probably changes for different players, but do you see almost kind of a sink or swim moment? as guys get later into their career, if they're willing to put more work in or if they're willing, you know, like the kind of the, they either need to change their game a little bit or change what their value is to a team. Almost kind of a maturity in professional sports. You can't be that same blistering speed guy on the outside every year. You can't be that well, slot receiver, you know. I think there'd be some speed guys that would argue with you, okay. you know. I think it's when it comes to those type of athletes at the skill position levels or I would say probably most athletes in general in, in pro sport, 
it's what they're willing to change in the off season, how much they're willing to give up and how much they're willing to put in in the off season that's going to determine how long they continue being a better athlete or the best athlete, <laughs> right? So um, I think those are the questions that, that get asked after a ten, during a 10-year career or whatever. Mike, I know some of your old linemen were downright angry after uh, what happened in the last game. Uh, they, they, I believe they've gotten over it, but have you seen a change in their focus or the way they're handling it right now? Um, no, I don't know that it's a change in focus. Uh, once again, I think they, they probably weren't happy with their first half, but they certainly, if there was going to be a change in focus or attitude, they adjusted at halftime pretty quickly. So um, I don't think there was anything tangible that you would see during this week of practice, right? I just, you know, they they do move on. They do see the film. They do get a little bit annoyed at watching it. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to think of better words, but uh, and then they do move on very quickly, and they just they just know what they got to do. Do you see any change in focus in this team preparing for Montreal? When and you're in the Eastern Final and playing against the team that beat them in the Grey Cup last year. Yeah. I, once again, I think our process is we've stuck to it enough through this entire season that that's not going to change, right? If guys, Im, Im, you know, have a little more emotional juice from one week to the next, you, you kind of hope it was steady, but it's not going to be because of the be because the process has changed and we've stuck to the same script we stick to every single week.